Well, first, let me um, thank you for having me here. I, I never know how I find myself in front of these distinguished audiences. I, I actually do know the rabbi has invited me to many such gatherings where so many of distinguished speakers come before me. And it's always on a good subject, you know, the subject of tolerance is, is one that um, I'm always intrigued by, I mean, I'm always engaged in and, and excited about. Um, sometimes I reduce the idea from tolerance to, to love, and I, and I kind of um, dismiss the differences in, in a way that even, um, that sometimes even uh, offends some people. So I'll be careful today not to do that. Uh, but when I'm sitting here and I'm looking at uh, you all, I, 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 I tell a, I'll tell you a quick story that um, the great religious teacher who was, uh, was speaking, and he told me this story about, and not me, but he told tons of people this story, but it stuck in my head as a great yogic speech. And uh, although I can't claim a religion, I can claim a, a spiritual practice, and, um, and there's tons of scripture, and, and in that scripture I, I find this, it's the only one I really can say I study deeply. I find no contradiction with any uh, of what's written in any scripture from any of the religions, the great world religions. And the story, you know, about Muhammad coming and going and having lived and inspired so many people, but never uh, before his death was there even one Muslim. And the Christians all know, but don't discuss often enough that Jesus came and he taught so many people simple ideas, basic ideas, beautiful ideas, but when he died there were no Christians. I know that Lord Buddha came and same story with him, he came and inspired many people to be like Lord Buddha, but there were no Buddhists. And it's disputable, but not, um, not from what I can tell that Abraham, little I know, Abraham came and left. And of course, when he passed, there were no Jews. And the reason I say that is because they all came in different colors. Uh, they spoke different languages, but they taught the same truth. And these are the basic ideas that promote, if we would live by, if, for instance, if any one of us could be like Muhammad, we would be just like Abraham. That we would be a good friend and in total union with Abraham. So this idea of, of interfaith dialogue, I'm always thankful when there's a beautiful book published on the subject. Many times I'm amazed that men of deep thinkers uh, have to, they, they have to question whether or not the fear or the, the anger or the separation or the disconnection is, is, uh, is useful or should they let go and work on the connectivity that, they, that, is, that is inherent in their character. Each one of us is born, I believe, with the exact same needs and the exact same wants and that when we meet one from a different faith or a different part of the world who speaks a different language, we spend any time with them in dialogue and we find this common thread. So I, I continue to work with, uh, to lately it's been Muslim Jewish dialogue and the rabbi's been my leader in, in, this, in this practice of this work, this spiritual work. And we found that these twinship programs that we're starting are spreading like wildfire. Isn't that true, right? All over this country, must be 42 to date, twinship programs where imams and rabbis will work together and create unity. So I'm just telling you this, this because I, you know, I hadn't prepared a speech, but, I, but it's, when I see a book like this, it's, you know, it's each one's prayer. Yesterday, the yogis all over the world had something called Global Mala. Global Mala. It's a day of peace, and Muslims and Jews and Christians and Buddhists and Hindus came together in the park here in New York and around the world and many other uh, spaces. And they did 108 sun salutations which you know, a very difficult physical practice. And so we learn in that practice to smile and breathe in every pose. And we have a prayer in each individual 
who's, who's praying, who's part of this practice, moves towards connectivity. It's a beautiful experience. And it's always beautiful to be connected to someone who, before your practice, you didn't realize was so similar to you. So in this room, I know that we all have the same understanding of our religion, that, that it is, in fact, uh, uh, promoting the same idea, and it, these scriptures all run parallel. And it's just for us to carry the prayer with us. If we can remember to promote this dialogue and to use our bodies and our access and our resources uh, so that we can sleep and so that we can be part of this perfect order. So I'm going to thank you all for having me. And Rabbi, thank you again. And thank you for this beautiful book. Thank you.